know, it's always wonderful for us to have questions because I think then we're always seeking answers and that's a good thing. We haven't arrived, but we're always looking for more. And I like this question. What is the difference between Christianity and Scientology? When you go into Scientology, you will see this is a thing of your mind and this is a thing of what you do, but also it has demonic activity in it. So when we look at the Bible, at Christianity, you know, we see that God takes our sin and God has good things for his people. He's not against you, he's for you. And the more I read the Bible, the more I speak his promises, the more I know he's for me. And so I think a lot of the cultish things and Scientology is a cult, is to really let the demonic into your mind, into your emotions, into the activity of your life. So I encourage you, get the Bible answers and don't just say, well, I like the Bible, but do you read the Bible? Do you let the Bible read you? <laughs> and I like this in Psalm 51, 6. It says, thou, God, desires truth in the inward man and in the hidden man, you'll make me to know wisdom. Now I think, what is truth? Truth is God's word, right? And where is he looking it for it? On the coffee table? No, he's looking for it in here. Then, now listen to me, he can take the truth in here and make it wisdom up here. Ah, now follow me. A lot of truth here, a lot of wisdom here. Little truth here, little wisdom here. And we can fall into cultish things when we don't see and let the truth really be revealed in us and direct our lives. Is it a sin for Christians to drink alcohol? I get this question quite a bit. And so I would say to you, is it a sin for Christians to eat food? And food is good for us, but the wrong kinds of food, too much food can be a problem. When I study the scriptures on alcohol, uh, there's a lot said in the Bible about it. And we see that people drank wine, even in the New Testament, Paul said, drink a little wine for your stomach's sake. But most people, when they get into drinking wine, it's not for their stomach, it's to get a buzz. Can I say it like that? And here's what I personally have found. I go to AA, not because I ever drank or had a problem with drinking, but because it's a good fishing place. I get to testify there and every now and then I get to lead someone to Christ. But I found out some things that I never dreamed, that there are people who if they drink alcohol, it absolutely will, they will become an alcoholic because their genes are set up to make them an alcoholic. Now, alcoholism is very dangerous. If you don't think so, I'm telling you, you're wrong. It's a very serious thing. And when I hear about these people, how they've lost their homes, their jobs, their health, everything, respectability, because of alcohol, it deeply concerns me. Because how do you know what your genes will do? I don't know what my genes will do. I'm half German, half Irish and French, but I don't want to take any opportunity to be an alcoholic and destroy my family. So that would be my number one thing. The other thing is sometimes people will say to me, especially overseas, you know, drink our wine, drink our alcohol, our liquor. And they say, you know, if you don't drink it, you will offend people. But I'm telling you, I've been in 134 countries and I don't drink their alcohol. And I never have found that it offended them. It's just the opposite. They, I say, well, I don't drink. Uh, I just have made a commitment to God that I wouldn't hurt people because I'm a leader, a Christian leader. What if someone saw me drinking wine who had just been set free, had been an AA or been an alcoholic and was free and they saw me drink it, they'd say, well, there's a Christian leader. So if it's okay for them, it's okay for me. And when I tell people that all around, they don't think I'm crazy. They respect me. So don't get into that, well, I've got a drink to have friends. That's stupid, capital S-T-U-P-I-D. And 
Why take anything into your body with a question mark? Mm -hmm. Or why take anything into your body that could cause others to stumble? So, is alcohol dangerous? Very dangerous. Now this is a tough question. Oh my goodness. Why doesn't God heal everyone? <laughs> Who hasn't asked that question before? I've asked it a million times. Why, God, don't you heal everyone? In fact, I was reading today, just this morning, about Job and all the hardship that he went through, even his own, like he had boils in his body and all. Why doesn't God heal everyone? And here's the honest answer from, from me. I don't know. I honestly don't know. And I could spend my whole life chasing down why, 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 why. I don't know. But at the end of the day, what I do know is that God loves us. God has plans, hopes to prosper us, give us hope in a future. And I also know this, Romans 8, 28 and 29, that if I stay in love with God and true to God's purposes, no matter what happens, healing or not healing, God works everything together for our good. So I encourage you, if this is a struggle for you, why isn't God healing my son, my daughter? Keep pressing in in faith. Keep trusting God. Faith pleases God. I, you say, well, why would I keep believing if I don't think God's going to do it? Faith pleases God. Ground zero. Nothing pleases God except faith, it says. Faith pleases God. So let's stay people of faith. Let's trust God. But no matter what happens or doesn't happen, let's continue to keep our eyes on Jesus, the author, the perfecter of our faith, and to keep our roots deep in Jesus, that nothing turns us away from Jesus, healing or no healing, that we are faithful no matter what that Jesus absolutely helps us, walks us through, redeems and brings tremendous outcomes for being faithful to him. Mm -hmm.